In this video we're going to talk about solving a quadratic function and what that means. In order to solve, uh, you're going to see fancier phrases. They're going to say things like, where does the function cross the x-axis and at which point? Or they're going to say, the zeros of a function occur at which values for x? And both of these are just fancy ways of saying solve the quadratic, or in other words, find the x-intercept. So you're either solving for x or you're finding the x-intercept. And in the past, you've had a lot of different ways of solving quadratics. And you're going to kind of need all of those skills. So if you need to review any of these methods, methods to solve a quadratic function, take a look at the previous videos in this uh, section about quadratics. So there are basically four main methods to solve a quadratic function. The first is always to factor. Check to see if you can factor it. Um, and we have different ways of factoring. There's special patterns for things like difference of squares. So if you see something like x squared minus 4, these two are squares and they're being subtracted. That's a difference of squares. There is a special little pattern to use when factoring something like that. We also have the X technique, um, so we'll practice this one in just a sec. And then the fancier version of that one is the X box technique. So review your factoring methods, because that will definitely save you some time. However, since we've been practicing completing the square quite a bit lately, you may prefer that method, and so we'll practice that in a little bit. And then thirdly, you can use square roots. So if we have a quadratic like this, if we want to undo that square, we use square roots. So sometimes we've done that, and I'll show you an example of where that would be appropriate. And then last but not least, we've got the quadratic formula. And that can be used at any time. There we go. If you don't know any of these other methods, just use the quadratic formula. The problem with that is that sometimes it takes a lot longer and you don't always have the time to do the quadratic formula especially like today on your homework when you have 20 problems you might not want to use the quadratic formula the entire time so I'm going to take you through trying each of these steps in this order to hopefully get you to choose the best method to solve a quadratic so let's try it out Let's write this first function down here. Given this quadratic, what's the best method to solve? Well, first, first thing you always want to do is to get it in order into our general form where x squared would be the first, then our x to the first power, and then that constant. Let's put it in that order first. That'll always help. And then check that first method, the factoring method. See if you can factor first. We always put the first letter, or the letter in the first spot there. And then you're always taking the uh, factors of this term, so factors of C, factors of the last term, that combine to make the middle term. So let's see if we can do that. Come up with factors of 15. Well, we got 15 and 1. And we got 5 and 3. Well, 5 and 3 add up or combine to make 8. So that's what we put in these last spots. And then your sign is always going to be whatever makes this middle term. So if I want 5 and 3 to make a positive 8, well, they both have to be positive. And we can always check it by foiling or distributing and to check our answer and get back to the beginning. So if we're able to factor, that saved us a bunch of time. And we can write our answer because when we want to find the zero of a function, or if we want to find the x-intercepts, we are always solving for where y equals zero. 
So if we set our function equal to zero, then we ask ourselves what value for x would make this whole thing equal zero? Well, an opposite number would make this whole thing equal zero because if x was negative five, this would be zero and zero times anything is zero. So one option is negative five. However, we also have this x. So the opposite of positive three would be negative three. That would make the entire thing equal zero. So two answers, negative five and negative three. We found the zeros of our function. We found the x-intercepts. Let's do another example. At this function. So again, first step is to get everything on the same side get it in that general form so we're going to subtract 6 and you could say equals 0 check your factoring are there factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 2 and we got negative 3 and 2 that doesn't equal negative 2 we have negative 2 and 3 that doesn't equal negative 2 negative 6 and 1, that doesn't combine to make negative 2. We also have negative 1 and 6, but that doesn't combine to make negative 2. So there aren't any factors. We can't factor to solve this. So let me move on to our second option. We want to try and complete the square. So let's try that. Give yourself a little spot. What do we need to complete the square there? We're going to balance our equation over here. So half of this squared is what we need to balance the square. So negative 1 is half, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. There is an invisible 1 out here, so we always multiply a times whatever we needed to complete the square there, and put it on the other side to balance. So 1 times 1 is 1. Rewrite this as a binomial squared. We're going to take the square root right here and use our middle sign. So the square root of 1 is 1. And since we're solving for x, we want to get rid of everything around x. So we're going to get rid of this negative 6. We're going to add 6. And then we're going to have to undo that square. So we square root both sides. When we do that, we write x minus 1 equals positive and negative square root of 7. And then the last step is to add 1 to both sides. So we get 1 plus or minus the square root of 7. Now lately we've been converting that to a decimal because we were graphing and we want to find the location on a graph. But in this case, for today, we're not putting it on a graph. We're just looking for the values so you can leave it in the more simplified form here. And this is what you'll most likely see on your final or on the test. So Leave it in that form. Let's do another example. We have another quadratic. So in this case, we think, can we factor this? Well, right off the bat, we don't even have our x to the first power, so factoring isn't going to really work. Completing the square would be possible, but that would take an awful lot of work as well. So it's our third option, use uh, square roots. Well, since all we have is a square to undo to get x, that's probably the best method to use. So let's solve for x. Let's get rid of everything around it first. We're going to get rid of this positive 1 by subtracting 1. We got 5 times x squared. We want to get rid of that 5 that's being multiplied. So we're going to divide by 5. That leaves x squared equals 10. And to undo the square, we square root. And just make sure you write plus or minus the square root of 10. And again, we can leave it in this form because we're just looking for the value we're looking for. What makes this equal to 0? What's the 0 of the function? or what's the solution to x. Okay. One more example here. All 
right, in general, if this value out here in the front, the A term, if that's greater than 1, chances are you're either going to have to complete the square or use the quadratic equation. Now, you can use Xbox if you want, but unless you're really good at it, I would suggest the things that we've been practicing lately. So we know we can't factor it uh, without a whole lot more work. So let's try and complete the square. Well, if I take that 2 out, because I need a to be positive 1, then all of a sudden I start creating a mess. And so at that point, I would say stop what you're doing and just move directly to the quadratic formula. So most likely save you a bunch of time. So remember the quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So knowing that this is your a term, your b term in the middle, and your c term last, substitute your values. The opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 5 would be positive 5, plus or minus. b squared would be negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1, all over 2 times a, which is 2. So simplify. 5 stays there for a little while. Negative 5 squared becomes positive 25. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Times 1 stays negative 8. We're all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Simplify under the radical. 5 plus or minus 25 minus 8 is 17. And it's all over 4. So again, because we're not graphing, and we're just looking for those values, the zeros of the function, or the solution to x. 5 plus or minus the square root of 17, all over 4. So there we've seen all four methods. And again, just check for factoring first. If that happens, it makes it nice and easy. Otherwise, try completing the square or using square roots. If neither of those work, then you can just use your quadratic formula, and hopefully you'll be able to get the solution by then. All right, good luck using the correct method, the fastest method, to solve the following quadratics.